Hello there, I'm Rackett with the Fan Carpet at the 35th London Critics Circle Awards. Later on we've got interviews with Timothy Spall, the youngest members of award-winning films, The Imitation Game and Into the Woods, and the newest cast member of Game of Thrones. Turner, obviously, exquisite painter and an extraordinary character, and so that's how did you start approaching that? Well, uh, two years before we were, in, uh, we were going to start, um, making or putting the film together, getting this, working on the uh, process of putting the film together, which is always, you do that with Mike Lee, it's not, you don't have a script, you build one up during the six month process. I learned how to paint for a couple of years and, Im and imbued myself with lots of practical knowledge about that and uh, that's how we started and then we got on with investigating the, the world of Turner and creating a character that would fit with the, the world that was, it was, um, that was presenting itself to us and eventually we ended up making a film with all of the stuff we came up with. Yeah. That's a very simplistic version of what happened, but that's what did happen. A massive, massive role with a huge cast. Can you just tell us a bit about your role and what it is similar to you? Yeah, well, I play Jack from uh, Into the Woods and uh, he likes to have, a, have an adventure, you know. He's sort of a cheeky chap like me and uh, loves to mess about, have fun. Well done on the falling. Um, Did you enjoy it? Yeah, amazing cast. And um, obviously, how can you be so conscious? You're working with a massive female cast, massive female roles. How did it feel to be able to portray that on screen? Um, well, I obviously it was my first film, and I got to work amongst you know, as you know, one of the most amazing casts. And I, not just young, but but you know, elder women, and it was just like incredible. It was a great first experience. Um, but to portray my character, oh God, I kind of closed my eyes and just. Opened for the best and so when when premiere day came it was a, it was a bit of a bit of a gulp but no it went all right and i'm so excited for it to be released in, in april um at the same time the game for us to be released i was about to say um joining house, house martel i was gonna say house martel very strong female characters as well how are you finding that strong. um well they're intimidating <laughs> you know they are really very strong and i'm not uh, it's amazing it's been fantastic um intimidating the first couple of days but once it got started and we're shooting in Seville it was um, amazing yeah. yeah it's a real underdog story it must have been a lot of uh, fun and interesting to shoot can you just tell us a bit about it absolutely um, so next girl wins the story of what you might refer to as the worst soccer team or worst, worst football team on earth um, they lost 31 nil to Australia back in 2001 and I guess our, our interest really was what keeps these guys playing 10 years later they still haven't won a game it took them 17 years in total um, and for me that was not something to laugh about it wasn't something to, to joke about it was something truly inspiring when you think of the multi-millionaire as we have who walk out every week um, perhaps they've lost a little bit of that as well that love for the game these guys they love it as much as anyone I've ever met in my life yeah I, I, you know say before I think we when you when you meet a people like that you don't, you don't want to get right into it straight away and, and, and you know press for every single emotional story that they've got but the longer you spend with them the more time you spend uh, as part of their family or ingrained in their family sleeping in the same buildings that they're sleeping in being there every meal with them then those emotions start to seep out I suppose outside of the filmmaking environment they become friends and brothers and sisters and, and you actually you do love these people and, and therefore for me as a filmmaker for Mike and I it was so important that that, what in, what, that magic that comes across when you're just friends with those guys comes across on screen as well yeah. What made you take the decision to go for such a kind of hyper-real aspect of it? Oh, we had to do something different. You know, Nick is one of the most remarkable living artists that we have. He's incredible. He's so disciplined and hardworking, but he's also one of the kind of darkest, most imaginative artists. And to do something standard, conventional with him, well, one, he wouldn't have done it, and two, I just can't imagine how that would, you know, yeah, it would just be such a disappointment. He was the perfect subject for us. To, to try something really unusual and because we had a friendship with him he trusted us to kind of um, to sort of fly with it really a massive cast uh, were you being cheeky on set with the rest of the cast members? yeah I was always cheeky on set yeah always like tapping on the shoulder and running away and that yeah <laughs> which cast member did you interact most with? Yeah, probably James Corden yeah he's a really nice guy and uh, I just played FIFA with him in my trailer and uh, that was a good memory to cherish yeah
get competitive then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his approach to his music and his style of writing, would you say that influenced how you approach the work as well? Massively. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. But all, I mean, you know, I think all the music we listen to bleeds into every bit of our life. If, if like us, you've grown up shaping your identity and your life and your, your tastes around the music that you listen to. Um, and I think that's an integral part of, of, of kind of what music documentaries should be trying to do today is not just to te- you know tell the story behind the music like behind the mixing desk and all that kind of you know the usual conventional stuff but what it does to you when it gets under your skin and how it affects your life and your mind and changes who you can be amazing film obviously the subject matter is not only pertains to modern day events um how did you even start approaching it uh, well, my co-producer Angus uh, came up with the original idea and we got very lucky that a new, very talented writer, Gregory Burke, took, off the idea, took away the idea, just ran with it, literally and metaphorically, and uh, came up with a great first draft. And Jan, who'd been looking for a script for some time, uh, fell in love with it. And then, you know, we just it went from there, really. It was a fairly smooth process once Jan came on, and then we had to get the money to make it. I don't know, I'd love to work with her again, you know, she's, she's amazing, like, to work with Mill Street and to even, like, go, like, a foot near her is just amazing, yeah. And in your future your career, you're going to try and get as many nominations? Yeah, uh, it's my first one, actually, and uh, it's really exciting, and I'd love to keep doing, like, getting nominations and keep doing films, yeah. Were you ever thinking, OK, we need to rein back a little bit to make it more into the documentary, or did you just go, no, and just fly with it? No, I mean, to be honest, you know, categories is, it's not really something you think about when you're making a film, you know, it was kind of, it was only really once we'd finished, I mean, we finished it pretty much a year ago, exactly, you know, we debuted at Sundance last year, and it was really, it was, that was the point at which we kind of realised what we'd done, that we'd made a documentary when we realised that's the category we were being screened in at Sundance, you know, before that we were just trying to make the best film that we could and tell the best story that we could. Hi there, we've been The Fan Carpet, I've been Lackett Wood. Thank you for watching and remember to follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.